Now, when First Light Optics told me that this box was going to be big, I kind of cast it off. I was like, yeah, I know how big a box is going to be. This is a big box. Uh, so in here is the Celestron Origin. Oh, we're nearly, nearly inside the outer box. Ah, oh, dear viewer, there has been a second box. Oh, there's a... Oh. <laughs> there's a third box. It's got the Russian dolls of boxes over here. Give me your secret. There is a box in this box. Oh my, there's so many boxes. There's so many boxes. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to be a problem because obviously once I've got everything out, I can just put all the boxes back inside the boxes, but... Uh... Okay. This is... This is literally an empty box. It even says on it, empty. It's packaging box. On this, that tells me what was in every single box. And obviously, I didn't read this because why would I read this? And what we have on the tripod base here is these three fixing points there. And they're gonna meet, they're gonna rise up to bolt into the bottom of the origin mount. Well, here it is then. This is the Celestron Origin. This is a six inch Rasa telescope um, operating F2.2. So pretty fast. And I have seen a lot of nice pictures out of Rasa's like Luca Matico, oh, he takes so many good photos and I think he's using a RAS on some of them. I now need to put that onto there. There you go, balanced, lovely. So this is Celestron's entry into this smart telescope home observatory market. Now, unlike the Sea Star or the Dwarf and everything, you know, small portable, I don't think Celestron went in that direction being small and portable. Don't get me wrong, it's not heavy. It's light enough to move around and I need to tighten that leg up. For what it is, it's quite light. The mount, this this origin unit here weighs more than the telescope. It's just not as small as the others. So this six here just seems nice. It's got a small sensor camera in it. It's got the 178 sensor in it. Six inches of aperture. Uh, 335 millimeter focal length. I've already put it into Stellarium. The field of view is actually tighter than you would imagine for 335 mil. Again, because of that small chip in it. As such, it actually frames M M101 quite nicely. The Pinwheel Galaxy it frames that quite nicely. So I'm going to be trying that first. It's new moon, so I don't need any filters. It comes with a filter drawer in it apparently which I'd need to examine. And then I'm just gonna call it there. I don't think it's designed for these all night observation periods. It's more of an outreach tool by the looks of it, but I'm gonna give it all a go over and see what I can do with this. Very excited, very excited to use my first Rasa. I don't know if it needs collimating. I've not seen any documentation about collimating this thing. We'll just see what happens. So that was the origin just um, calibrating itself, initializing it says. So what it does, it points itself up, uh, takes a few pictures, makes sure it's in focus, prepares itself. It says here it's now ready to image. So I guess I can just search for something. Uh, let's go for the M45. Not found, okay. That's nice. Ah, okay, at the bottom, center. One thing I'm already finding about this origin that I'm not too bliss pleased about, it's very loud. Wow, that found that pretty fast, that did. I would get a live display as well. That's really cool. 
wonder if this is the field of view I'm going to be looking at. Ready to image. Okay. Now then, how do I... Near real-time view, start imaging to start a long exposure. Processing image one. So it's going to do the processing in-house as well by the looks of it. I can't really see what I'm looking at though. Yeah, let's turn off the night vision. So here's the live stack. That's what that is. It's a live stack there. They're 10 seconds exposures. That's not too bad, is it? So image and schedule that. To add an object to tonight's schedule, select it and tap the info button on the chart, then add to tonight's schedule from the object menu. So tap it, add to tonight's schedule, image and schedule. Pleadies. Ah. Oh. Okay. Image. So I, I can actually run, make a plan then. So I can start on the Pleiades now. And I can tell it to go for a certain amount of time. And what kind of sub exposure I want to go through. Let's try to manual 30. And I guess we'll just leave it as is. Uh, I want you to stop. End. Download and save. I have already set a setting on the uh, origin here to save the raw files as well. So I can obviously then try and edit them myself. I wonder where it's downloading to. Hopefully it's downloading onto either the origin or the memory stick I've put inside of it. So this is the result of that stack. We can see that actually some of the detail is beginning to form. But I really like the red and blue star colors, especially in that little chain at the bottom left of the corner of the image. There is a bit of light pollution showing because unfortunately street lamps were shining directly into the origin. It's just the way that my garden is, unfortunately. To, um, here we go, I'm starting now, aren't I? <laughs> I'm beginning now. Oh, this is what it feels like. <laughs> Center on the Orion Nebula, which is right near a street lamp right now. It's not in the great place. Man, this is very loud. Ah, we can see the live view here. All right, let's look at the live view. No, I want to move it a bit, so show telescope controls. So I can just tweak this. Start imaging. I don't know, because I chose 30 seconds in the plan, I think the live stacking though is, a, is 10 seconds. I believe it is hard set that a live stack is 10 seconds. And I'm guessing it's clearly doing the derotation as well for the field rotation because it isn't an equatorial mount. goodness <laughs> that is so cool <laughs> that is so cool <laughs> look at it I mean I know it's doing the work and it's got AI in it and all sorts like that, but what the hell? And I don't even feel bad that I've missed the framing because I can just move it. The imaging box could be a little easy to see. Really. And this sky chart is awful to look at. Let's go for that one. Uh, start imaging. 
And what's also I've seen on the on the manual, you can cast this to a smart TV as well. So you could have your friends around, have this outside, do it in station mode. And then you could just be projecting this onto like a big TV, projector, whatever. That's really cool. Come on, give me the image. Come on. <laughs> I feel like I'm addicted already. It's like, it's not giving me the picture that I want. Hurry up. Give me it. All right. While I wait for the Origin to finish its photograph here, let's talk about the file manager. Now, at the end of these little auto shoot sessions, you can see it pops up, says download and save. What that is actually doing is it requests the final photo, the one that you'll see on the screen on the mobile device, it requests that and then downloads a copy of it to the phone that you're using. That way you can immediately share it. But if you actually look into the file manager on the Origin itself, you can see it's actually saving every single target, every single session individually. So I've only demonstrated two Orion Nebulas here so far, but we can see there's three or four entries here. Now, if we double click that and go into the specific folder for the Orion Nebula, what we can also see is all the lights, darks, flats that it's taken for the image. I don't know how it's doing flats, but it's got flat frames and these are all fits. So you can actually then just take these fits into your own stacking software if you so wished and stack the image yourself again. You can also get a final master stacked image which is unedited. So you can just put that straight into your editing software also and have your own go at it. So I thought that was really interesting to see. <laughs> oh, they're so good. That is nuts. I think I need a Rasa. Well, <laughs> I, think, I think I've got the hunch already for a Rasa. The colors are very saturated. Like there's a lot of vibrance they're pumping into the blue of the Orion Nebula there. But that for a minute is cracking. I think I'll just let this run for two minutes. So total integration of 70 seconds. That is so good. Oh, I do know one I wanted to look at. When I did it in Stellarium, it looks like it would be a good fit for it. Um, the Northern Triffid, but there's not a Nebula filter in there. So I wonder how good it's actually gonna come out. I mean, this is just nuts for two minutes. So to begin to wrap this up, let's talk about the cost now. So as you see this here, the origin, as you see here with the Rasa 6 and the mount, we are looking at £3,999 at the time of this video. And there are, of course, extras you could buy for this. So you could get a padded case for the Rasa 6 itself, that will cost you £119. You get a nebula filter for it, which you'd want if you want to shoot nebulae. That's going to cost you £199. And then there is a wedge as well that will make this into an EQ. They have said that there's EQ mode planned on the roadmap of development for the Rasa Origin. The wedge is going to cost you £436, which means that's a grand total of £4,753 for this. That's expensive. There's no way of cutting that. That's a lot of money. Now, again, they've not targeted this as the small portable telescopes such as sea stars and dwarfs and things like that. They have targeted this as an intelligent home observatory system where you can pop it down, get it going, live captures, cast it to a device, you know, outreach, social, things like that. But it's still a lot of money. In the time I've had the Origin, I've had about six months now, there are improvements I think it needs, especially for this £4,000 price tag, for, such as the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi needs a stronger card or a stronger chip in it. I normally set up where I, it is in the garden here. The chair is about a meter and a half away and it would lose signal. And then the, there's no small issue about the motors are so loud in this.
I was sat, again with the origin here, sat in my front room upstairs, I could hear it slewing. And I personally think that's a big no-no. These are things that are meant to be outside at night time. And many of us live in residential areas such as this, where I've got neighbors both sides of me, even the neighbors across the road could probably hear this slewing. So noise is a massive factor for me personally. And I think it just needs quieter motors. Improve the Wi-Fi chip, quieten down the motors, and carry on developing the app. You know, there's a certain quality of life features, like in the imaging plan, when you click to adjust the exposures, in that particular menu, you need to use your phone's back button and not the X in the top corner, because that will take you back to the live home page screen. It doesn't make sense to me. So a couple of quality of life improvements I feel needed on the app. However, I do acknowledge that the app will continue to be improved. Software downloads, firmware updates, etc., like that will make this a better thing over time. Obviously, the hardware in this particular model can't be changed. But I did find the Origin to be extremely easy to use. It is so easy to use. You charge it up, you pop it outside, you switch it on, take the cover off. It kind of takes care of itself. It will sort itself out, it will align itself, focus itself, and then you just go on the app and tell you where, tell it where you want to point and it will take you there. It is so easy to use. And after, you know, you spend a couple of minutes with it, it's very intuitive to get it pointing around the night sky, nebulae, galaxies. I really like that. It's so straightforward, especially if this is meant to be an outreach tool or something to that extent, having it so straightforward is just a bonus in it. And it is fun to use. You saw me when I saw the Orion Nebula come through. It was so exciting. It brought back some of that joy when I first started this hobby, when you see the Orion Nebula for the first time, when you see a galaxy the first time. And the fact is this could do that in about 30 seconds of exposures was obscene. And that is obviously down to the raster, but also the, the editing that the software was doing in the background. Sometimes the editing looked a bit too AI heavy, like it did too much denoising or anything like that. But I also appreciate it's doing the best with what it's got. If you've only given it 20 seconds of data, well, take 20 seconds of data in your normal shot and have fun trying to edit a photo out of that. You know what I mean? So there are pros and cons. There are just, the, the, the big things for me are quite big for its price tag, the Wi-Fi card and the noise of it. But you know, that might not bother you. You might be out here all the time or you might set a plan on and go inside or you might live somewhere more rural where the noise isn't as big of a problem. It's down to you to decide if that's non-negotiable for you or not. That's my time with the Celestial Origin. I've run out of time with it. I need to send it back. I had fun using it, apart from the, the previous things I've mentioned. I think the images out of it were good considering what I had. And it really has tempted me to actually want to possibly get a RASA myself in the future because that was just a lot of fun. So if you want any more information about the origin, you can click the links in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you thought I could have done better, give it a thumbs down and consider subscribing for more videos such as this. I'm trying a new review format like, like with this video. We're a bit of a real time imaging with a bit of this scripted speaking stuff. Let me know what you feel of that. Thank you in the comments down below. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.